Good morning. A couple of quick announcements that are intimately connected. Like the first is that I am in fact on vacation. I'm recording this ahead of time. And the second is that uh, as previously mentioned, when Lutheran Social Services of Illinois provided material for Good Shepherd Sunday, they included a couple of videos. See, on that Sunday every year, we take some time to let you know what the wider church is up to through our social services organization. So for us, of course, that's LSSI, I being Illinois. Uh, so, but I wasn't on vacation that week. So I decided to hold them for this week as a, as a virtual supply. Um, so Pastor Steve Erickson is preaching in person, but here online you'll see the resources they provided. To start with, we'll have a story from somebody they've helped right here in Illinois that will play as soon as I'm done talking here. And then at the usual time, they'll, their sermon, the sermon they provided, will be dropped in. Now, I'm going to have the same gospel reading leading up to that that we had two weeks ago. So if it sounds familiar, it's not an error. Just stick around until the sermon comes up. It is a, I don't know if I already mentioned this, the sermon is shorter. That's why I'm including both videos, because together it amounts to about the average length of one of my sermons. So uh, with that, let's get started. My name is Bill Fleck, and uh, the first time I found out about LSSI was when I was eight years old at uh, St. Simon's. I had been at that church in Sunday school since I was five years old. And our pastor sent the richest man in the congregation, it was during the pressure, but he's still rich, out to the truth. He says, go out there, I hear there's, they have some needs and some problems, see what, what you can find out, what we can do to help them. And that was what, what would have been 1933, yeah. So he found, first thing he saw that some of the little kids were sharing beds, single beds, because they didn't have enough beds. So he went to Dixon and bought enough beds and uh, I don't know how many, and mattresses. So they all had a place to sleep. That he, and then uh, Natusa became part of our, our church budget. And then that funneled down to a Sunday school kids. And we started collecting our pennies and nickels because that's about all we offered in those days, a dime maybe at Sunday school, you know so that we could give that money, along with the church money, to Nechusa for, for the orphanage there, yeah. During the Depression, my dad had a woodworking shop to make his violins and mandolins and guitars and all that, you know. A real violin is carved out of a block of wood, out of spruce on the top and maple on the bottom, and it has to be hand carved. Well, Daddy would trust me with tools and show me how to use them. Then when I got into the Navy and asked if I could be uh, work towards a carpenter's rate, and I got to be second class, and that was working on boats. Another new experience. I think the scariest moment was climbing down that cargo on that small island called Navy, right next to Kwajalein. We were outfitted as Marines when we took that island. We, we had backpacks, gas masks, helmets, rifles, shovels. I mean, we were so loaded. And I thought, geez, if I, if I lose my hold on this cargo net and it's going back and forth, and I don't, don't land in that boat, I'll go right to the bottom, you know. We were living in tents. We hadn't built up the island yet. It was still a mess. And I had no tools on the island except a saw and a hammer. Around five in the morning, it was dark. The, the officer of the watch, uh, well, he ain't fleck, he says, uh, we got a dead sailor and we don't have any coffins. Go down at the at the end of the island, there's some bombed out Japanese buildings, you might find enough wood. So I went down there and yeah, there was wood there, it was all weather beaten, yeah, rusty nails. So I found some boards, cut them to size, cut, saved the nails, and uh, it was still get just sun coming up and all of a sudden it's like that sun just popped out over the horizon and that bright light shined on me, you know? And I says, oh my God, this is resurrection morning. This is Easter. And I, you know, it just hit me then. And I said, here, this boy's folks are probably at church praying for him. Here I am building a coffin on Easter morning. I mean, that sort of stuck with me. <laughs> 
My name is Stefan Potushnik. I'm pastor here at Christus Victor Lutheran Church in Elk Grove Village. For several years now, Bill is involved in this cross ministry that he builds in his garage. And he found out that the youth would like to go to the National Youth Gathering at the ELCA. And so he thought it would be a great idea, or the youth director thought it was a great idea to hand out uh, crosses. We gave him a quota, about 5,000 crosses we need. And for um, a single person to make by hand without big machines, 5,000 crosses is quite a task. So Bill got on it, and um, every day he's in his garage and is making out of oak uh, wood, uh, beautiful crosses and brings them pretty much whenever he comes to church he brings a bag and we have now a large amount already so soon we will be ready for, for the National Youth Gathering to hand out these crosses. And now we have uh, our dear Bill Fleck here who will talk about Luther Social Service of Illinois. We have Good Shepherd Sunday and he will tell us a little about why he is so passionate about uh, supporting Luther Social Service and all the good things they are doing here in our state. Thank you, Bill, for being here this morning. Good morning and welcome to Good Shepherd Sunday. Uh, Every year, uh, Bill is a champion of Luther Social Service for us. He comes and does uh, the reading usually. He shares a personal story how he and his late wife, Jean, the good work of Luther Social Service of Illinois and is really inspiring us to join him in being the hands and feet of Jesus in our community. He's one hell of a person. He's a, a real faith-based person human being and probably the fairest and the most generous and kind and thoughtful man I think I've ever met. I think LSSI has played a very important part of his life. The common thread is his faith, his need to spread the gospel, and that is the way he can do that. In this little workshop, this is how he can spread the gospel, and giving it to as many people as he's giving it to and to the kids. I, I hope that they'll be grateful and they'll understand that this was made by somebody with a lot of love and a lot of faith. When you think about a 96-year-old gentleman who's been a philanthropist from the age of eight years old in supporting not only LSSI's ministries, but many ministries in caring for God's children and inspiring others to do that. And this is a cross that is made from one of the pews at St. Simon's Church, where Bill first began his journey of philanthropy. And it's just amazing that this cross reminds me every day of Bill Fleck, his inspiring story of giving. And I know that when I have this with me, I have a little bit of Bill Fleck with me, and I'm, I'm able to take his passion along with me in the work that I do. Whenever he speaks about LSSI, he's quoting this Bible verse. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. When Bill reads this now, we know Bill is doing this in his life in front of us, and we are inspired to do the same in our daily life. Everybody's got some money that they could spare. I'm, I'm one that'll ask for a dollar if I can get it, you know. And all that all adds up because I tell them about the good things that LSI can do with that money. And I feel that they've got to feel good that they're part of it. That they know that it's, that money is being used as they would like it to be used. And that it goes a lot further than any other outfit I know that does good work.
Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for the waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Bountiful God, you gather your people into your realm, and you promise us food from your tree of life. Nourish us with your word, that empowered by your spirit, we may love one another and the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the 16th chapter of Acts. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Here ends the reading.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Judeans gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Good morning. I bring greetings from the over 40,000 persons with whom we share in life, in service, and the 1,200 staff and volunteers throughout the state. From Chicago to Rockford to the Quad Cities, Peoria, Marion, Champaign, Joliet, Aurora, and back, serving persons with disabilities, senior adults, children and families at risk of or placed in foster care, and persons with mental illness and substance use disorder. Our readings and gospel share with us who Jesus is as our shepherd, our good shepherd. From Psalms, Jesus leads us, comforts us, prepares for us, is merciful and good to us. In John, his voice is known. He keeps us. No one can take us from him. And in Revelation on that day, We will find shelter from hunger and thirst, guides to springs of living water. Jesus will wipe away every tear. There will be no more sorrows. The Good Shepherd wants us to know him. He wants to be known. We are not only given this knowledge in faith, but also as a model in our relationship to others. The Good Shepherd sees us in our wholeness. Jesus has a whole person view. He sees all of us. At Lutheran Social Services, we strive as a ministry to view the whole person. It is much too easy to see a person as the sum of their crisis, their illness, their symptoms, their behavior. We are all more than that, and we don't live in a vacuum. We are connected as families, as communities, interconnected through people, resources, and support. Our work at LSSI has grown in thinking of the whole person in community and striving to figure out what is their experience? What supports are available? What people need to live in order to have dignity, health and well-being, and to reach their full potential or to realize hopes and dreams? Our whole person view has called us to work on building out the ecosystem that surrounds the person and to find ways of coordinating and connecting people to the sports they need. An example of this is a person named Nisi. Nisi is a 38-year-old woman who reached out to our substance use program after returning to drug use. She had completed substance use treatment several years prior, but recent life circumstances triggered her drug use. She recognized that a relapse was a serious sign and did not want to go back to her former drug use, so she called us knowing we had supported her in the past. Nisi lacked stable housing, a job, health care, and was separated from her family. She has a teenage son who was living with her sister. He was angry and wanted nothing to do with his mom. Her relationship with her sister was also strained, so she was isolated from family. Our substance use program immediately gave Nisi temporary housing and counseling. Nisi was able to set her goals for getting back on track. She was connected to medical, dental, and vision care. She was treated for allergies and provided prescription glasses. Her caseworker linked with a 12-step recovery community so that Nisi began building her recovery supports in addition to her counseling. Nisi was assisted in finding employment and received financial services so that she could begin planning for her future. She began to repair her relationship with her son and sister and began to take financial responsibility and to be a mom to her son. Nisi began to mentor other women. 
Has she experienced success helping others on a path to recovery? She has since been able to move out of temporary housing, the recovery home, and lives on her home. This is to be the Good Shepherd, the one who leads us, comforts us, prepares for us, is merciful and good to us. This is to love our neighbor as the Good Shepherd loves us. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work. Guide bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in their visioning, partnership, and planning. Surround us with your peace, Lord, in your mercy. Give a vision of increase and abundant harvest for farmers, laborers, and gardeners who are beginning their growing season. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. Lord, in your mercy. Shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. When those in power seek to assert dominance over others, confound their ways and make them yield to your humble authority. Be with those who would disrupt the will of tyrants. We pray especially for John, Josh, Tyler, Jack, Matt, Nick, and Dane, and for Becca and all others doing missionary work in Ukraine and other dangerous places. Lord, in your mercy. Give safe haven to those who seek healing, liberation, or peace. We pray especially for those who rest heavy on our hearts and minds, those who reside on our prayer list, and those whose needs are known only to you. Create places filled with hospitality where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. Uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our communities who assist people experience homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized people. Accomplish your will through their efforts. Lord, in your mercy. Assemble your people at rivers, streams, and fonts where we remember our baptism and welcome others into the communion of saints. Gather us with those who have died when we meet together at your river of life. Lord, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And as you take a moment to share a greeting of peace, let's think about who to share that greeting with. Because not a lot of people are catching this live, but we still have more than a dozen or so households that might catch it between Sunday night all the way through Saturday by some people's rhythms. So go ahead and just send a greeting of peace to somebody, anybody you can think of, especially if you can think of somebody in the congregation. That would be swell. And as you do that, I'll remind you, as we pray together in this venue, we're giving thanks for gifts given and received in any venue. With that, let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done.